what would you what would you say are holding um women back from squirting because it's 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 something that both men and women are fascinated by and are interested in so and i believe that every woman has got the um capability to squirt but i don't think a lot of women squirt for various reasons what would you say maybe i don't know the top two or three reasons that inhibit or prohibit um prevent women from experience squirting? i think it's i think number one is the like what we're talking about with the same thing that keeps them from orgasming is just being in their head too much or worrying about you know what's happening or oh does he like me or is this is is it is this a safe situation i think you know that's what gina ogden talks about too is safety is number one so emotionally and physically safe so you want to have that um that trust that openness to feel that he's present that you're being nurtured that sort of thing which i think you touch on also in your book like creating that safety and that um clearing the space, I think you refer to it as like clearing the space and making sure that there's not a whole bunch of jumble mumbo and all the stuff in her head. Um, and then, yeah, the worry about a BP, just the misconceptions and what her partner might think, because when you they you feel that urge coming, it, it's similar to the sensation of having to urinate, but then it's not, it's different. And sometimes, I mean, for me, I was very young um, and I actually had a, um, I had, a couple experiences of squirting before I even had a, a official orgasm, like a, you know, like, cause I know there, there's a difference. Sometimes squirting comes along with an orgasm and sometimes it's separate. And, and you talk about that in the book as well. And I was, and it would happen when I was a little bit drunk. So being younger, I think it was because I was more relaxed, <laughs> you know, being drunk, but I was also in a very long-term committed relationship. So I felt safe and nurtured and all of that stuff in that partnership. And he happened to be, you know, pretty well endowed. So that it's just, it hits the spots a little bit easier too. And so, but I all also thought, oh my gosh, how did that happen? How was that pee? But then I'm like, how, it can't be pee because I have to pee afterwards. Like it's still, like I still have pee like a ton afterwards. So it couldn't have been pee, right? So getting, and then you know, that piques my curiosity, but I think, you know, after all these years, it's still, there's still that misconception. I talk to men, I talk to women, oh, it's just pee. No, it's not. It's, yeah. it's a different, it's a different sensation. It's a different smell. It's a different, you know, everything. And um, so I think women just are afraid to, to let go. And I, and I also think that the more comfortable a woman is with her body, and this is another thing that Gina Ogden, Ogden talks about, is like this um, self-esteem and this feeling good about her body. That is probably one of the most orgasmic things. Um, one of that is a woman's biggest orgasmic potential is being comfortable in her own body. And so right away she's up against culture, right? That is telling her what she should look like and whatever else. And so if her partner and her lover can say, can compliment her like, oh, wow, you're beautiful or look at your, you know, sexy hip or whatever it is, or, you know, just authentic, of course. Um, and then just even noticing like how her body is shifting as she gets more turned on. It's like, you know, women thrive with that kind of attention. And I think that men, a lot of men do it. I think men are really good at that because it is authentic and they are very turned on visually by their partners. Um, but if they're skipping that step, they're really missing out on, you know, something that can turn the dial from two to 10. And then, and then she also has to believe it. You know, she has to believe that he's telling the truth that is genuine and be able to receive that. And, and so that that's where, you know, what makes sense with like Lizzo, Lizzo's videos, you know, everybody's like, she's doing too much, like what's going on, but I get it. It's like, she's celebrating her body. And because she's doing that, and she's letting everybody witness it, she's probably having some rocking orgasms, you know, like in, in the bedroom. Um, it's, that's a big part of it too. So it's just, really being free to come as you, no pun intended, come as you are and just let go. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. And I, and I think it's hard, like people sometimes, um, like my clients will sometimes ask me how to squirt. And I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a sex educator in the sense that 
I can tell people techniques. That's never been my thing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm into the dynamics, the energy, the emotional context, the, you know, my background is as a licensed marriage and family therapist. So this is, I look into relationship dynamics and you mentioned it in your book too. Once the sex is gone, the marriage is gone. You know, I think somebody had said that you were quoting somebody. Um, and I tend to agree with that, you know, from personal experience and also in the couples that I've worked with, if there's a, if that's gone, that's a big, big piece. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot that, that goes into a woman's sexual response. And another thing in the research too, is every woman is different and that can be hard for men who want to learn how to pleasure a woman, or it can be super exciting because that's novelty. Every woman is different. You're going to have to figure out the maze or how to unlock, you know, that unique key. And for me, my turn ons would, I desire changes throughout the years as well. So what does it for me now didn't do it for me 10 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever else. So we're homeodynamic humans. And, you know, again, cultural context shifts, our relational um, context shift. It's really quite um, exciting. And again, like a metaphor for life. You know, how do we stay open? How do we find pleasure amongst the shifting plates? of life. Thank you.